Our guest for today is the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log x divided by x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. So let's treat it to an exquisite solution development. First up, we're going to call the integral we have i for reference purposes. And the first thing I need here is a partial fraction decomposition. So let's write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times x divided by 1 plus x times x squared plus 1. And now we're going to be looking for a partial fraction decomposition for this term here. So we can expand this as a divided by x plus 1 plus bx plus c divided by x squared plus 1. And this implies that we can write x equal to a times x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c times x plus 1. So first up, we let x plus 1 equal to 0, which implies that x is negative 1. So we have negative 1 equal to 2 times a plus 0, which implies that a equals negative 1 half. And just equating the coefficients of x squared and x terms would be enough for figuring out the values of b and c. So first up, we notice that we have x equal to the x squared terms are a x squared and bx squared, so the coefficients are a plus b, and the coefficients of the x terms here would be b plus c plus the constant terms that we don't need, because this would be enough. We see that a plus b equals zero, which implies that b is negative a, so that's a positive one half, and we see that b plus c equals one, which implies that c equals one minus b, which is one half, so this implies that c equals one half as well. And we can write this result as x divided by x plus one times x squared plus one equal to one half is everywhere. So let's just factor that out. Negative one by x, oh terribly sorry about that, x plus one plus x plus one divided by x squared plus one. Now returning to the integration problem, we can write this as 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of log x divided by x plus 1. And wait, there's a negative sign here. And because of the linearity of the integration operator, of course, I now have three integrals to work with. And one more, that's 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log x divided by x squared plus 1. And one more integral that is 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of log x divided by x squared plus 1 dx. And this integral here is just one of the many integral representations of Catalan's constant, the original top g. And in this case, it's the negative of Catalan's constant. Okay, so let me just replace all of this with minus g by 2 up here. And I still have two integrals to work with. So let's start off with this one here. So we have i sub 1 equal to uh, integral from 0 to 1 of log x divided by x plus 1 dx. And let's make a substitution to get a familiar structure. We're going to let, oh, terribly sorry about that. We're, now we're going to let negative log x equal to u. So as x approaches 0, the negative logarithm that is u will approach infinity. So we have an integral from infinity to, as x approaches 1, we have log 1, which is 0. And we can switch up the limits here and introduce a negative sign as well. So we have log x. Log x would be negative u. So again, cancel that out as well. So we have u. And what about the differential element? Well, x equals e to negative u, according to this equation. So this implies that dx would be negative e to the negative u du. And again, we get a negative sign. Hard to get rid of this. Okay, so we have e to the negative u plus 1. And now let's expand using e to the u. So if I just multiply upstairs and downstairs by e to the u, we have some nice cancellation in the numerator. And we have negative integral from 0 to infinity of u du divided by 1 plus e to the u. And now we can use 
a nice integral representation of the product of the gamma and eta functions, we know that the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the s minus 1 du divided by 1 plus e to the u equals gamma, oh, terribly sorry about that, gamma s times the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at s. So in this case, we see that we have s equal to 2. So this implies that the integral i, and I should probably have called this, yeah, I did call i sub 1, but I forgot. So i sub 1 equals gamma 2 times eta 2. And gamma 2 is just 1, and eta 2 is pi squared by 12. Okay, cool. And wait, there was a negative sign that we could not get rid of despite our best efforts. So the result here is negative pi squared by 12. With this integral sorted out to negative pi squared by 12, and you have this factor of negative 1 half as well. So this gives us pi squared by 24 plus 1 half of another integral i sub 2 minus g by 2. So now to evaluate i sub 2, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log x dx divided by x squared plus 1. So a substitution here is pretty obvious. We're going to let x squared equal to some other variable, call it u. So this implies that 2x dx equals du, or x dx is 1 half du. So this means we have the integral still from 0 to 1. The limits of integration are clearly not bothered. And we have this factor of 1 half because of the new differential element du. We have the logarithm of root u divided by u plus 1. And because of the properties of the logarithm, we can pop out a factor of 1 half, and that gives us a factor of 1 by 4 outside. And we just evaluated, evaluated this integral. We know it sorts out to negative pi squared by 12, correct? So that means here you're going to have i sub 2 equal to negative pi squared by 48. And returning to the equation we just wrote out, so replacing this by negative pi squared by 48, so that means we have a negative pi squared by, on multiplication, we have a 96 over here. Okay, cool. 1 by 24 minus 1 by 96 is like 1 minus 1 by 4. So that's what, like 3 quarters. So that means we have i equal to 3 quarters of pi squared by 24 minus g by 2. Some cancellation. And that means we have pi squared by 32 minus g by 2, which is a pretty cool result, no doubt. But this was an integral from 0 to 1. What if we integrate the exact same function, that's x times log x, divided by 1 plus x times x squared plus 1, from this time 0 to infinity. How would that affect the result? Well, I already have the partial fraction decomposition for the integrand, so why not just evaluate the same integrals by replacing their limits by 0 and infinity? The problem with that is one of those integrals is going to be divergent, so we're going to have to come up with something else. We've evaluated the case for the integral from 0 to 1, so why not just evaluate the integral from 0 to 1, uh, from 1 to infinity of x times log x dx divided by 1 plus x times x squared plus 1 dx. Let's call this integral i sub 1 and perform a transformation by going to the, by taking x to the 1 by x world. So that takes dx to the negative 1 by x squared dx world. Okay, and now you have the limits being 1 to 0, 1 by x log 1 by x, which is of course the negative of the log of x, divided by 1 plus 1 by x can be written out as 1 plus x by x, and the second term here in the denominator can be written as 1 plus x squared by x squared, and the differential element is negative 1 by x squared dx. So some nice cancellation here of negative signs, and we have some more cancellation. So that means we're interested in the negative of the integral from 0 to 1 of log x dx divided by 1 plus x 
times x squared plus 1. Again, we need a partial fraction decomposition, so we have the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times, we have 1 plus x here and 1 plus x squared here. So if I have a 1 minus x term here, then that'll, then that'll give me x squared, uh, 1 minus x squared. And here I'm going to need a 1. So yeah, a plus sign here would ensure the cancellation of the x squared terms. And I'm left with 1 plus 1 being 2. So I need to balance that out by a 1 half. Okay, so that means I have two integrals to evaluate. One is negative 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 rather three integrals as before, log x divided by one plus x, uh, plus sign, uh, no, negative sign again, because I have that one minus x thing. So minus one half integral from zero to one, log x divided by one plus x squared. Yeah, everything seems pretty familiar. Plus one half times the integral from zero to one, of x times log x divided by 1 plus x squared. So we've evaluated all of these integrals before. The first one here sorted out to negative pi squared by 12. So again, we have a pi squared by 24. Minus 1 half of this integral here is again negative of Catalan's constant. Okay. And plus 1 half of what exactly was this term? I remember it being negative pi squared by 48, correct? So you have something very similar here. Again, you have pi squared by 32, but this time you have one half, positive one half of Catalan's constant. So that's I sub one. And remembering that our new target integral, the one from zero to infinity, now equals the result of the first integration that was pi squared by 32 minus one half of top g plus pi squared by 32 plus one half of top g. Okay, so this implies that i equals pi squared by 16. Another really nice result, quite different from the case of zero to one and pretty nice indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.